Okay, great. Uh, um, I'm Robert Peters, and I'm with ORCID. Um, I'm the technology director for ORCID. And I wanted to cover identifying identities, ORCID, identities, and the blockchain. And so what's fun about this conference, there seems to be actually a pretty wide variety of people. There's uh, technologists, uh, there's admins here, there's people who know what blockchain is, there's people who have no clue what blockchain is. Um, and so this presentation will kind of cover a little bit of a lot of different subjects and just if, if you don't understand one thing, just kind of bear with it and acronyms, we all hate them, but they're there. Um, so what is ORCID, the organization? Um, first of all, ORCID is an acronym. It's the Open Researcher Contributor ID. Uh, we're an open nonprofit organization and we're run by and for the research community. Uh, we provide researchers with a unique identifier, the ORCID ID, that reliably and clearly connects them with their research contributions and affiliations. And you'll see a, an example uh, URL. Um, so that's an ORCID identifier. And there's our domain. And then there's a 16-digit numeric ID that kind of uh, identifies who that researcher is. And if you click that, you'll, for humans, humans resolve to a record that kind of looks like a CV, it's not really a CV, but we'll have a list of works or, or different name variations that you want recognized in your research activities. Uh, we have about 500 systems that have integrated ORCID ID, and that's growing quickly. Um, and those general use cases would include grant applications, manuscript submissions, uh, CRIS systems, repositories. We've been talking with uh, Open Pharma initiatives, you know, so. It's a pretty general uh, identifier, useful for any academic, scholar, or research uh, space. Um, and so we use the term researchers a lot, but actually we include admins and we include um, other types of scholastic work. So I'm gonna say researcher a lot, but we really, it's a very inclusive term uh, for us. Um, so the researcher, um, typically how they interact with ORCID is an uh, institution will ask them to authenticate their ID. And once that institution authenticates the ID, they can use it to uh, collect information about the researcher and then attribute uh, the researcher correctly in their metadata. And in ideal situations, that metadata gets pushed all the way to other systems that include publishers, employers, and funders, and eventually, hopefully, it gets into the ORCID record. And uh, we see that nowadays with things called the uh, Crossref Auto Update, where when, people, when somebody publishes their work, they're notified by ORCID that it's been published before they, the publisher or anybody else had notified them because some of those systems work quick enough. Other systems don't, so, uh, you know, it's, um, but we want to get there where it works that way for everybody. Okay, the technology. Uh, this is going to get exciting. Uh, the ORCID tech stack. Uh, we are a typical Java web app, uh, J2EE, so this is like a term that was popular 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, the good news is, though, we're open source. Uh, we have a public API that's CC0, so any information the researcher chooses to share becomes CC0, and the researcher controls uh, what information they share. And then we have a member API, um, and the member API allows our members to write to the API and then adds on a, a, a few other things, like some uh, information that the researcher may want to share with our membership and not the public, and uh, a few things of convenience like webhooks. Um, access to the record is controlled uh, by the researcher, so the researcher gives permission to our, our members uh, to read the record or push the information to the record, and that's via OAuth2, another fun uh, protocol. And finally, no short-term blockchain plans, so why am I here? Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, we're kind of, earlier we heard talk earlier about, hey, we just do a lot of this stuff in a centralized manner, and that's great, and why don't we just get to it, because nobody really cares, blah, blah, blah. Um, and uh, ORCID is one example of that working, um, but we are actually really excited for blockchain, and, and if you want to understand why, you got to read our vision statement. Um, ORCID's vision is a world where all who participate in research, scholarship, innovation are uniquely identified and connected to their contributions and affiliations across time, disciplines, and borders. So our mission is not ORCID is the entirety of everything. That's not what we want to do. Our mission is to make sure researchers are connected to their outputs. 
And so often I talk to people, and a lot of block time, blockchain people too, they, hey Rob, what's going on? I wanna to talk to you, we're doing something, and we think ORCID looks like this, this is what they think ORCID looks like. I'm like, ah, okay, well let's talk some more. Um, and the reality is ORCID is actually just part of a researcher's identity. So you have your university identity, you have your government identity, you have a LinkedIn, uh, your social identity actually ends up being pretty important when it comes to research. Um, Twitter, uh, ORCID record, every time I look or I dissect the problem, there's one more researcher identity need, like, oh, I need credentials to access this equipment or uh, access this uh, um, collection of books. <clears throat> and so uh, ORCID, we don't see ourselves as solving that problem alone. It's a community effort. Um, and, and really we need the community to kind of address all the different types of identity needs, just to name a few, is like how do you correctly uh, credential some of these natural, uh, na national identity or local university identity, um, and their social identity needs. Um, there's, there's a lot of problems there that ORCID's actually never gonna directly approach. So instead, uh, our, what we do is we offer a researcher identifier and a record that can help connect researchers to their many identities and activities. And what that kind of looks like would be something like this. Uh, you know, we'd really like to see the ORCID identifier used uh, to help attribute metadata in all these systems out there and then have that metadata point to the ORCID record and ideally vice versa. We want that metadata references in the ORCID record that we can point back to the source of uh, a lot of these things. Great, uh, so now we've kind of covered the identifier and that's really the core of what ORCID does. Uh, but now let's talk a little bit about how that helps connect uh, with other identifiers, mostly identifiers about research outputs. Uh, you have research papers, university affiliations, peer reviews, grants, equipment. There, researchers do a lot of stuff. Conferences, right, we're at a conference, people are producing at the conferences, how do you correctly attribute that researcher to it? Um, and every time we look, there's yet another thing that probably needs attribution. Um, so researchers are doing a lot of work out there and they're not getting attribution correctly. And there's, uh, this graph kind of shows uh, a little bit of where we have good coverage. If we're talking about works, researcher actually, uh, ORCID uh, via Crossref other, um, and, um, and other uh, PID providers provides pretty good coverage. You can push a lot of different types of works at ORCID to have them correctly uh, attributed. But when you get into equipment, that becomes very, it's not, well, the community's not there yet. So we're trying to facilitate building out infrastructure for attributing grant awards, equipment, peer reviews, um, researcher resources, which is a new one that's coming up. But there's always uh, another thing we need to try to figure out how to connect and attribute researchers to. Um, and Currently, this is just a short-term roadmap of new things that, you know, most researchers are familiar with um, PIDs such as a DOI, right? So I get a DOI, my paper is now official and they feel good about it. And that's the extent, they know they can click this link and it resolves to their paper. Um, but we're trying to help the community develop uh, the same kind of infrastructure for uh, affiliation types, uh, researcher resources and grant IDs. And there's all kinds of other things out there that we also need to connect to. And then I used the term PID, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, there's lots of people that probably don't know what a PID is, and so I tried to think of the easiest explanation I could come up with, and it's a, it's a resolvable, actionable, uh, durable identifiers that can be used to locate and describe things. And typically we see this as URLs that exist forever. And from ORCID's uh, viewpoint, we really like uh, URLs that resolve to metadata for both machines and humans. So there's, you see some that do one or the other, but we really want to do both well. And even beyond kind of the activities and that I've been referencing, uh, there's lots of other things that kind of we need to help connect researchers to. Uh, there's different profile systems, right? Somebody where we had, uh, you have your NIH profile and you have your LinkedIn profile. You might have a, a profile on Scopus. And so depending upon what areas you are and what areas you move into, you definitely have more than a few profiles. 
Um, how do we even connect a researcher to their Google search results? I mean, that kind of ends up being pretty important in the research community. Somebody types in a name, oh, voila, they, they pop up. Uh, government identities, uh, somebody brought up researcher gate earlier today, like, well, how do we connect that kind of profile? Um, and all kinds of stuff that really we need to help facilitate connecting to. And so when you look at the scope of the problem, I just kind of, I quickly describe at a high level, it's huge. Like how do we connect all these things to researchers? And uh, ORCID's viewpoint is it's a community effort, we can't go it alone. So uh, we really need uh, community initiatives to help make this happen. Which brings us right back to blockchain. And so here's an uh, interesting space, there's a lot of in innovation going on, and lots of possibilities for managing researcher identity and attribution of activities. And so why ORCID plus blockchain? Well, the value ORCID sees in it is uh, it, it's immutable and distributed. And when we're talking about connecting researchers to their activities, their activities are everywhere, so and very distri uh, distributed. So having distributed systems uh, kind of correctly attribute those things makes a lot of sense to us. Um, and specifically, uh, we we really like we're really liking the innovation we're seeing in the verified claims built on uh, decentralized self-sovereign identifiers. Um, and we also um, like some of the initiatives we see around tracking researchers' activities with decentralized systems. And uh, we really would like collaboration on uh, new PIDs and PID infrastructure. And some of those are, could be addressed best with blockchain technologies. And so let's get down to the brass tacks. What are we really asking? Um, uh, number one is if you're trying to attribute activities to researchers or attribute a uh, researcher itself, uh, use the ORCID ID, and that may or may not link directly to the ORCID record. You could use an ORCID ID in an internal system, external system. But the important thing is uh, there is this ID out there where we're trying to make it easy to disambiguate who a researcher is. Um, add PID or PID-like resolution to researcher activities pushed to blockchain. So a lot of blockchain technology is very hard for people to understand. Uh, the tooling around it's very hard. You have to install Chrome extensions and buy coins and do all kinds of stuff. Well, uh, for the metadata, both for machines and humans, PID-like PID infrastructure, i.e. links that are persistent and you can click and see what the link is describing, uh, it's pretty easy for people to use. And so building that on top of your blockchain initiatives as a way of making, uh, having easy resolution uh, is something ORCID's really interested in promoting. And then finally, if you want all the, the, you want all the gold stars, uh, push references to your PIDs uh, to the ORCID record. So if you have, you developed a blockchain and you're pushing this stuff to the blockchain and then you have a way of resolving it via a link that is PID or PID-like, uh, push it to ORCID record and then that makes it easier for the researcher to find it, it makes it easier for other systems to resolve the ID, get metadata about the researcher and see, oh, hey, here's this little tidbit of information, maybe I should follow this PID to the source, which probably has, you know, uh, information that has the granularity you need for what you're describing on the blockchain. And so as you guys are out there creating innovation uh, in the researcher community, uh, we just ask you to consider the ways you can interface with ORCID, collaborate with us, and kind of help the whole community uh, disambiguate and attribute researchers correctly. And that is it. Questions? So no, I have one, uh, one question or one statement. So thank you very much for this talk, clarifying the difference between identity and identifier. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, we have to solve the problem of identity. Uh, we, if, if we don't solve this problem, then we don't need to talk about blockchain and the uh, advanced concepts uh, that we want to lay a kind of like money distribution, maybe pseudonymous publications and all this stuff, right? Yeah. And this brings me to another thing. Identifiers are fine, but they are like, at the moment, there's no high pressure on them to like be really one single 
identity, right? Do you, I mean, ORCID you call, almost call identity because there's no incentive to create 20 or 30 ORCID IDs by, you know, whatever. as soon as we start to distribute money, put economic pressure on something, there might be much more incentives to create socket puppet like fake identities, mm -hmm. right? Is uh, it, and are there like, how many people check whether this is a real person at ORCID? Uh, well, nobody checks if it's a real person. So we can just like create, I can create 20 ORCID IDs. Uh, that is possible, yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I know my friends at ResearchGate that mm. they like, they have like people looking into identities, right? So that you don't create fake identities, right? Well, because the, they, they have another interest there, the, right? The difference yeah. is, is, right, ORCID, uh, there's a couple different ways we approach the issues. Number one is we have members, and the members can authenticate an ORCID identifier and push yeah. inf information to the record. So, yeah, if a researcher asserts they work somewhere, yeah, that's great. But if their institution writes to the record, they work at the institution, yeah. that helps you identify the person. Exactly, um, yeah. And then additionally, you know, when you get into credentialing government credentials or you really want that really a thousand percent solid, somebody showed up at a desk with a passport and, uh, I don't know, your electric bill and some kind of proof of who you are, uh, what I'd really like to see is I'd like to see initiatives where somebody builds a tooling to push those things to the blockchain yeah. and provide references to the ORCID record, like, hey, if you, will, if you want that kind of proof, uh, here's a PID, follow this link on the PID, that PID's gonna describe the person, and, if, and this is how, it should also describe how you prove it via the blockchain tooling. So, right, if you're using sovereign self-identity, oh, here's a link that I click, and I go off the ORCID record, and I see some data, oh, there, there really is some kind of blockchain, some kind of sovereign self-identity, and uh, if I want to prove it myself, this is a trust node I go to, to verify that fact, right? That tooling is in development in the blockchain community. So uh, ORCID's asking for references to things like that to be pushed to the record. But yeah. we're, we're never going to approach doing identity in ourselves, right? Because yeah. uh, we're in all the countries in the world in one facet or another. Um, and then we get into regional problems, uh, local, local problems. And it's not, the goal of ORCID is to um, is to provide an identifier to help yeah. with disambiguation and attribution, not, yeah. not the end all to identification. So really that's, that's a perfect space for a blockchain to approach a problem. Yeah, yeah, sorry, this was not like that you never advertise that you're doing that. So that's completely right, but yeah. it's like makes completely sense. So we have like to work together with other ed entities that basically do it anyways. Publishers, research institutes, Social yep. networks, yeah. Yep, yep. And so we're always out there trying to uh, get direct direct relationships with membership who can push metadata the record. So if you can get a source from publisher, or not, let's forget the publisher. Let's go to the journal level. You can get attribution at the journal level. Great. And then somebody goes and looks at your record, they're going to understand what's going on. Thanks, great. It was almost the same argument, so mentioning this concept of self-sovereign identity, verifiable claims, the W3C community draft about this and so on. The response that I got felt almost hostile. So in the meantime, there <laughs> they developed something and I'm super glad about this. This is really yeah. thumbs up. And uh, one, one concrete question or uh, suggestion. Mm -hmm. uh, how about, as a first step, so to say, uh, have dedicated fields in, uh, in the ORCID record for um, crypto ad addresses so that you can mm -hmm. store certain public keys in your profile to make it easier f f to, to have a machine-readable verification of claims and things on chain? Uh, yeah, that's definitely uh, something that we we're always actively looking at. Uh, one, one metric though is uh, actual researcher uptake um, is always kind of a, a hard metric to pass on some of those things. Um, but yeah, we're, we're always iterating on what metadata can be pushed to the record. So, uh, and you can push person identifiers to the, we're a person identifier, you can push other person identifiers. And so 
if you have a credential and you frame it as a person identifier, there's already a place for that. And of course, they have to click it to go off and see it. But, but yeah, and then uh, we're also uh, pushing uh, into some cryptographic patterns, so um, stuff like that. So the iteration in ORCID, we're always trying to grow, we're always trying to improve, um, and, and we're open to collaboration. Further questions? Otherwise, thank you very much again.